perfect. What's going on, beautiful people? Uh, how y'all doing? I know it's been a little bit. <laughs> I've been MIA, not my fault. I have a lot of reasons why, and I'll get to that in another video. But as of this video, you guys blew this by like a mile. Uh, you guys really wanted to hear about my dating experience as a, strand, a transgender FTM. And I was really hoping you guys wasn't like, you guys weren't gonna choose this, but of course y'all did, because y'all like doing that stuff. So, ah. Uh, I don't even know where to start. All right, let me go in chronological order um, in terms of my experience. So I would say I started dating, like somewhat like real dating, because you know, when you're younger, dating doesn't really count, but like, I would say around like seventh grade, right? So, and uh, be mindful that I'm not gonna say any names, like real names or anything. So, my first experience dating, um, I wasn't, I mean, like, I was out, but, like, if you didn't know me, you weren't gonna know immediately that I was transgender, really. So, again, I was, like, in the seventh grade, that's when I first really started transi transitioning, and, you know, I had the haircut, um, always dressed like a guy, stereotypically, so... You know, there wasn't too much, you know, if you weren't in the know, you weren't going to be in the know unless I was to let you know, you know? So, um, I was dating this girl. Let's call her... Janice, right? I was dating Janice. And it had been maybe, like, three months in, and... I was just, no, it was a little longer than that. Um, I would say like six months in. Um, it's We're in seventh grade, we're not doing too much. I mean, and she didn't live in my city. She lived like, kind of like in a, uh, out, like a town a little bit uh, far away. Uh, so we would only meet each other sometimes in the mall. That's like, that was our spot. All of our friends, we would just hang out in the mall together whenever we could. So, as far as she knew, I was just a regular guy. Um, I mean, you know what I mean, regular, regular. But when I had told her, you guys remember the text messaging app, Kick? If y'all don't know, y'all too young. But uh, we used to kick each other. And I remember telling her, like, very vividly, because this memory, like, it's just ingrained in my memory. Um, so I was like... I don't know if you know, but I was actually born a female. I was like, I hope this doesn't change anything between us. Um, Cause you know, we love each other, you know, it's a great love, but we love each other. And I'm the, still the same dude as you do. And I, in this moment, I was really just like, Praying that this wasn't gonna change anything because we had a pretty good stable relationship for as far as like seventh graders go because you know hormones is on the rise no no she was like something along the lines of you're a disgusting beast she was just like Basically, like, you tricked me, you deceived me. She, she found it a lot more comical rather than, like, despicable or, like, you know, just complete rejection. It was just very comical to her. And she, I mean, she, as a seventh grader, you just say some mean, mean stuff. So she was, she went off, she went off. But I, I anticipated it, really. I mean, at the time... I mean, I don't comfor comfortably, comfortably, I don't, I don't have any comfort, no solace or anything like that when it comes to 
um, not telling your partner ahead of time. And as a seventh grader, going through these ropes for the first time, I was what, maybe 14 years old in seventh grade? I don't know, someone do the math. But um, I, this was an experience that I needed to have for moving forward because I mean, yeah, she, she flamed me and I was pretty close to her friends too. Another one flamed me. Another one was just like, oh, I'm on your side. Like, you're cool still, blah, blah, blah. Those, those, those girls ended up fighting sooner or later on some unrelated stuff. But like, it was just an experience that I needed to have. So it gave me another lens, a, a better lens to understand how the other person must have felt when, I mean, cause it's a, it's a big, it's a big deal. Like as, as much as we want to face it or don't want to face it, it's a big deal. So it's different. It's something different that your significant other has to, um, like they have to internalize it and embrace it. And if they don't have the correct mindset to internalize it and embrace it, it's going to be toxic. And that's what we were, um, exchanging toxicity really. Cause in one, uh, one side of things, I'm deceiving. And the other side of things, she's not supporting. So that's something I had to understand. Uh, so moving forward into my next relationship, uh, I was a lot more like public. I was advocating for myself and others who were transgender. So people really started to understand that I am transgender. It just became a fact of, is he telling the truth? Like, is he lying? Is he just a regular dude? Or like, is he actually trans? So that's what people were really trying to navigate. But I was completely fine with that. As long as they have some type of seed in their mind that I'm telling the truth, I'm cool with that. It's up to you if you really want to um, investigate, really. I mean, I ain't got nothing to hide. Like, my whole life is out here, really, on YouTube. So, but, um, so my next girlfriend, um, Maria right let's call her Maria um it was very toxic just all in all um two out of ten do not recommend <laughs> uh but she did understand the whole um transgender aspect a lot more than my first girlfriend and she did embrace it so when in terms of when I when I say embracing it I mean like she's supporting it she's um acknowledging it um, I know in a lot of relationships that um, transgender people are in, like the other person, they know that they're, that they're transgender, but they don't embrace it fully to where they actually pick up on certain um, signals or things like that. Let me, let me just give an example. Like, um, let's see, uh, dysphoria, for example. If I was ever feeling... Uh, like a big sense of dysphoria. She knew exactly how to um, navigate through that so I could feel better, you know, tell me the right things I needed to hear or give me the space that I needed or maybe just um, give me more, um, you know, like empathy, really, or just a sense of, oh, I'm here with you. She did that a lot better than the first girlfriend, but she also knew ahead of time. So if, you, if you're trying to really get someone that I think is gonna embrace you more, it's kind of best to let them know ahead of time so then they have more time to process and embrace the whole uh, different scenario, different outcome, or really anything like that. So, um, on unrelated things, it didn't end up working out because she, she was just terrible, I mean, she just made a lot of poor choices that reflected on our relationship poorly. Um, but that was that. Um, and in another relationship that I had, um, she, she also embraced it, but she didn't know what to do. And for someone that is living through it, it's hard to repeatedly tell them what they should do because you kind of as a human you naturally feel like you want people to understand whatever you're doing saying or going through so it was very it was a hard dynamic in terms of trying to get her to understand and also like execute and 
like anyone, it would take time. And for me, coming from a person that, um, my, from my second relationship, coming from a person that immediately got it, it was hard to have that patience. So patience is definitely key um, as the transgender person. So you can kind of like get a sense, be in that other person's shoes. And, and that's not to say that this is all your job, because definitely if you're on, if you're the significant other, it's your job to even like one, try to understand the other person's feelings, thoughts, emotions, etc., And also to be there, be an ally for them and show that you care because caring is i would say the number one thing what i prefer what i like the most and that could just be me and i'm speaking from my experience i liked it a lot more when she would come to me asking me questions because then that shows that they're actually willing and caring to be with me long term because they're making all these efforts to do those extra steps you know so I think that's a that plays a big factor in having overall success in a relationship. And I'm talking from a dude that doesn't even have successful relationships, but those are from other other reasons. Other reasons. Hear me out. So um I would say my overall experience has been like eh? I mean, it could be a lot worse. Um I I've had instances within these uh, relationships. Um, I have instances where um, my girlfriend was just too shy. So when someone would like belittle me, degrade me or anything like that, she wouldn't like not come to the rescue because I don't need people to rescue me, but like she wasn't defending my name. And I haven't, I have an issue with that. So that could just be me, but that's type, that's like something I kind of look for someone to do for me because I would do the same for you. Um, other relationships, um, when I would say things, they wouldn't take it seriously or they didn't understand the magnitude of how I was feeling. So like when I tell you dysphoria is something serious and I need you to take it seriously, I don't need you to just say, oh, I'm a female, I go through the same things too. Not really. I mean, yes, we all feel insecurities, but again, it's the magnitude difference is what I'm talking about because you're not having a a whole like life body changing experience where you're going from one um biological sex to another like that's a whole different component that you kind of need to understand right real quickly i just want to say i'm so sorry y'all have to see me like this ow I totally just clipped my my finger in that. But I'm so sorry you have to see me like this. I thought, all right, so one prideful thing that a lot of trans men do is keep their, like, sideburns and stuff like that because, you know, you want to be more masculine, blah, 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 blah. But this is looking like a piece of shit. It is crap. I look like a gargoyle. Um, So I kind of need to shave this off, but... I don't know who's gonna win toxic masculinity or um reality really um it also makes my fat uh, my face look fatter so ah. i can make a video um i my uh i can make another video talking about some tips and tricks and not really like trick tricks like trick trick hits but like you know tips advice um, consejos para, uh, oh, I didn't even speak Spanish, but, um, for, um, dating someone that's transgender. Uh, I know when I was, um, trying to help one of my significant others, um, understand me more, I was looking for videos, really, because, you know, my patience was, uh, like, gone, so I was looking for videos, references, and I had found one, but it wasn't, like, the best. Um, I, there was a couple others, but they weren't really targeting uh, the advice that she needed. So I can definitely provide you guys with that. And uh, for the other way around, for dating people that are cisgender or etc. And how to help them navigate through this or like just understanding certain things. Um, but dating and any dating anyone that is no, excuse me.
dating as transgender or no i'm dating anyone that is transgender wait <laughs> hold on as a transgender dating um it can be very dangerous um for As a, as a transgender, dating can be very serious. It can be very dangerous. It can be, um, like I said, very toxic. And that's just because of the climate of others, the um, environment that you can be put in. Um, so I need to make sure, well, I want to make sure you guys are safe. Uh, I care about you all so much. Um, I love you guys and I would hate to see anyone have to undergo um any dangerous harmful situation so i want to make sure to give you guys all the tools that you guys could possibly have um and this is me speaking from my own experience my own knowledge um in no way shape or form am i saying i know how to uh navigate go through these uh experiences better than anyone else would um this is just my, what I believe and what I think. Um, so yeah, yeah, uh, there's a lot of crazy, strange, freaky people out there. And you have to always, always um, be safe, really. And it's hard to trust people when you're transgender and you like pretty much as a transgender person, you have to ensure a lot of trust into people um, and that, and that's like it's huge and people really downplay trust a lot you know and this world is very scary but you don't have to necessarily see it as scary if you have the correct tools and that's what i'm going to try to provide you guys with um and like as always if you made it to the end of the video please give this video a thumbs up I want to help as many people as possible, and you giving us a thumbs up makes that possible. Um, follow me on my social media, my Instagram, Snapchat, um, and of course, YouTube. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much. Um, oh, wait. Also, I made a TikTok. Um, so I got TikTok now. Uh, so I'll also put that in the description. So you guys know what to do. See you guys later. Deuces.